Seam is fixed and it's time to finish this project off. All that's left is painting and mounting it to a base. I start off by spray painting, the color is almond from Krylon, but any beige color would work. Don't spray paint inside by the way if you live with someone, it's very unpopular. At the moment I live in New York and we've had really rough weather lately and spray painting outside hasn't really been an option and I wanted to get the video out for you guys but now I'm unpopular in the household. <laughs> it's also bad for your health so don't spray paint inside. The light in this video is off for some reason, I still have a lot to learn about making videos clearly but I'll get there eventually. The process is fairly simple, I use burnt umber oil paint and apply it to the sculpture with a brush and then I rub it off with a rag and this leaves the recesses dark and the high points lighter. It gives definition to the texture in the sculpture and depth to the sculpture that I think one layer of color would never be able to do. There is a million ways you could do this or go about this really. You could reverse the colors and get darker high points and lighter recesses giving the illusion of dust having been built up. You can use different color combinations. Blue and greens, for example, I think that could be pretty cool. In retrospect, I think it would have been nice to desaturate or dull the burnt umber down a little bit. It looks a bit saturated for my taste, which makes the sculpt to look, sculpture looks, sculpture looks slightly garish, I think, which is not so nice. I think I always planned for this to look really good, as good as a bronze or a marble, but to me nothing can compete with bronze or marble. And so because of this I'm always a bit disappointed in the result I get when I do this stuff. But you know, it is what it is. In some of the deep creases where the rag won't reach, uh, I'll use a soft brush to soften the edge and blend the darkest darks into the rest of the piece. And this helps, you know, give it a soft transition, but keep the recesses dark. In retrospect, I think I should have rubbed off a bit more of the burnt umber as well. Uh, the whole thing turned out a bit too dark. But you know, it's a learning experience, so I'll keep this in mind for next time, I guess. Oil color rubs off really easily and you can control the consistency of it with a thinner. Or you can even remove it with a thinner. So oil painting is uh, forgiving and you can take all the time you need as well, which is nice. I've heard Many people call this patinaing, but that's not really what this is. It's painting, sculpture. I think people like to call it patinaing because it sounds fancy or something and it makes it seem like bronze perhaps, but it's not, so who knows. There's also a way of painting the sculpture that I've used before where you spray paint the entire sculpture a dark color, then sponge paint the high points in a lighter color, and then you mix dry pigments with wax and apply that with a brush. And this works well, but it's a bit tough to control and adjust. Uh, so I decided to try this method this time around. I used this method uh, on two sculptures that I've done actually. Uh, one that is in the Mayam in Barcelona in Spain. Uh, it was part of the Figurativas exhibition called, it's called uh, The Dereliction of Self. And I also used this method on a sculpture called Disintegrating Mortal, which is a torso with an arm and a half a head. And this one was exhibited by the National Sculpture Society uh, last October and November, I think, in, in South Carolina. And this is something you can experiment with. You could probably use metallic powders, bronze powders, dry bronze powder mixed in with, with the wax, and you'll probably get some really interesting results. I've only used uh, normal uh, color pigments that you would use to mix mix up of your own oil paints for example but uh, I think there's a lot of room for experiment there so you know give it a shot guys see what you can come up with sorry about the bad lighting in this video guys and gals soon I'll be in a brightly lit studio of my own which is something I can't wait for and finally a nice shot from the one day we've had nice weather here in a while all I need now is a pretty wooden base to mount it to. Thank you for watching. The next video will be the last in this series, I think. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the videos, and I hope to see you in the next one.